Hello and welcome to Retro PC Refurbs. Today we are testing the Xeon E5620. This has on the Intel's own website four cores and eight threads, but Windows, CPU Z, and MSI Afterburner only saw it as a four core, four threaded CPU, so I am baffled. This has a low base frequency of 2.4 GHz with a turbo of only 2.66 GHz. This would be a similar performance to a first gen i5-750. So I'm testing 10 games comparing one CPU against two CPUs. And now for the benchmarks. First up is CS2. This seemed to struggle on two CPUs. As you can see, the load is shared out over the eight cores of the two CPUs and a lot lower usage, which could be the reason why CS2 is running so badly. A more modern game now which is much better with the 8 cores. The single CPU seems to have more lower dips whereas the two CPUs have a higher FPS and less drops not going below 45. Elden Ring now has no significant advantages over two CPUs both seem to be ebb and flowing around the 30 FPS mark. Again, the two CPUs are using less power over the eight cores. Far Cry has again a very close FPS count, with the two CPUs three to five FPS higher which could be down to margin of error. Again, very similar with the single and double CPUs. Three to five FPS difference. This is the third time the, C the two CPUs are better. Hogwarts is a fairly new title and again the two CPUs are consistently a few frames more than the single one. That's four for the two Xeons with one draw and one loss so far. Spider-Man likes more calls. The two CPU at times were 30 fps higher albeit very briefly Captain most of the time it was 16 to 20 yet? fps no. but we're still a tower, significant still increase the did the two and if i join in on the fun you know how his lawyers are this one needs to go by the book come on yuri i've been waiting eight oh. years for this you really wanna so sunken land is a beta title and not optimized the single cpu outperforms the two by a few frames. I'll give this another win, so that's two wins. Dark Tide. Again, one beats the two CPUs. The graphics are on low for all games, so that the CPU is taking most of the hit. Move along, I'm busy. Resident Evil 4 had some issues with my capture card, so not a direct comparison, but the single CPU definitely outperforms the two.
Well, the winner is Get a Better Chip. But it was five to the two CPUs and four to the single. With one draw. I have a sneaky suspicion the two CPUs were not turboing to the 2.66 gigahertz or being pushed to the limits. If you could overclock the Xeons, I think you would see a better result. The frequency is just too low for modern games. Some games are still in early access and not optimised, so maybe not taking advantage of the 8 cores.